Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paladin Dance, and today I'll be doing a The Other Side Dungeon Guide. Now, although I have really personally enjoyed tanking this dungeon, it is one of the more difficult ones to actually time. It did get nerfed, so now we have 43 minutes instead of 41 minutes to time it, along with a couple other nerfs. Those nerfs were not active while we did this keys in particular, but just so you know, going into it now, it should be a little bit easier than it was for us, and then it has been this entire season. The route I did for this dungeon it was pretty standard and it works for literally just about any single key. You really don't have to alternate this route up until you get into about 20 or higher level keys. So this route will work for all you guys for the most part unless you're actually pushing 20 or higher and let's get into it. Alright ladies and gents, so starting right off, obviously we're going to do the big pull here. So we grab the two packs here in the beginning, you're going to combine it with the ones in the back. And typically you're going to lust this even on Tyrannical because your lust should be back up for Hakkar. If you're on Tyrannical, you can maybe save your lust if you think you're going to blow through the trash and you'll be at Hakkar before the 10 minute mark. However, this is fortified, so we're going to grab everything, blow it all up. Now, the name of the game for this is Kiting. You're going to have to be kiting this pack for days. I can tank a little bit in the beginning when I use my Ardent Defender, but then after that I want to save my cooldowns for later, and you're just going to have to kite. The big guy enrages, much like the other ones in the dungeon, so your druids and hunters can suit them, but aside from that, you're basically just going to be running away from all this in a circle until your team DPSs everything down. Moving on to the second pack, I've had a lot of people tell me that they have trouble in this dungeon because they blow all their CDs in the first pack and then they don't have any for the second. What you should be doing is only really using about one CD for each of these initially and then you should be kiting them. So here we have the inspired mob, usually you just pull all this together but you're going to pull it without the inspired mob in this case and you're going to want to get the kicks on the death speaker. Those are big priority kicks. The Death Speaker will chunk you as a tank, even while you're kiting, so if those are not kicked by the group, then you might die anyways, and that's not really going to be your fault. However here, much like the first one, I end up using my final stand talent and just bubbling at first, and then I start moving away. I don't think I need to take final stand in this dungeon, to be honest. I, I, if you feel more comfortable using it, then by all means do so. I personally don't think I'll be using it for this dungeon anymore. I really only try and use it on like one or two dungeons at this point because I'm going to have to kite all of these packs regardless. So as you saw, all I'm going to be doing here is just moving around, keeping up time on Shield of the Righteous, using my WOG whenever I can, getting the kicks whenever I can on the Death Speaker. And aside from that, you really just have to kite this pack, guys, right? You just have to wait for your DPS to kill everything while you're kiting because you're not really ever going to be able to face tank that pack. Here we go do the Raging Spirit. Now you should always have a Night Fae when you're doing this dungeon because they can open up the urns around the dungeon which are going to stun anything in their range. Here you're going to want to stun the Rage Cast. So ideally you start casting the urn before the Rage goes off. And right as the Rage starts going off, maybe it gets one or two ticks off, the urn will pop. If you do not have CDs for this, I recommend trying to skip it. You can jump around the platforms and skip this pack and come back to it later. I recommend having at least one CD for this, like a Combust or Convoked Spirits, because otherwise you're going to be taking a lot of damage, especially the higher the key level gets. These guys do a ton of damage. The lower key levels, it's not really a big deal. Your healer can usually heal through it. But once you start getting up there in key levels, you're going to want CDs for that pack. Here we come downstairs, the raptor packs, not really an issue for me personally. I will kite them a little bit because they're inspired so we can't stun them or anything here. You can dispel the poison as a prop paladin, obviously if you guys don't already know, cleanse toxins. So I do that. Usually I can face tank these, but since they were inspired I decided not to just because I wanted to be a little bit safer and I didn't have any cooldowns up. So after you kill those, you're going to get your prideful. Well, you can do alternatively, like I said, if you skip the big guy, the one that rages, you can jump over to the platform, pull the raptors, and then the two guys behind us here, and that will spawn Prideful, and then you can go into the guy that rages, the guy with the mask, with Prideful up. Here we do the opposite because we had a cooldown, so it didn't really matter that much, and we get the Prideful, go into this double pack. So these guys, again, even face tanking these guys kind of hurts a little bit, 
But once they enrage, there's no chance you'll ever be able to tank these. You're going to have to run away. Immediately you see that while I'm doing this, my druid sues the one. However, we don't have a hunter or anything, so the other one's still running around. And even so, I just take a ton of damage while tanking these. So you have to be really careful with these. It's just going to be a lot of kiting in the outer ring of the dungeon and in the early stages. But after we do all this trash, we're going to return to the first part which is gonna lead us to Hakkar. If you follow this route, you're gonna end up having Prideful on Hakkar with Lust. So that's ideally what you want. You want Lust and Prideful for Hakkar because it's a very difficult boss the longer the fight gets. So going into this Hakkar room, typically I pull this pack right here with the Pat, the other priest that is patting around. Typically you just pull those together and you make sure to kick their heels and the Hex on the priest and you'll be fine. However, this week it was inspiring. So what I did was I pulled the priest back. Since the other mobs just stand there, my DPS could then go DPS the mobs without the inspiring, interrupt them, make sure they didn't enrage, and we just have the priest left over. On this priest, again, make sure you kick the hex and make sure you kick the heels. If you kick the hex and the heels, you'll be fine. Definitely do not let any of the heels go off. If they do, he's gonna basically full heal. It's really not good. It's gonna slow you down a lot if you let that happen. With this pat, we have the healer, and we also have an inspired in the next pack. So what we did was CC the inspired mob, pull the other mobs back with this hexer. Once we kill the hexer, we'll go ahead and pull the other hexer, the one that was inspired. Typically, you can just pull all this together and just get the kicks on everything. But again, since everything's inspired, you want to make sure that you just split this up. Now, as a tank, you're going to want to watch out for the blade storms and the bleeding stacks that these small mobs apply to you. So. After three or four stacks, you'll probably want to start to kite and drop the stacks. You can also Kirin pot these, but typically these mobs aren't too bad. You just kite and you'll be good. So this next pack here, again, you have a priest and then three of the flying little guys. Make sure to not let the flying guys get their cast off. So you want to be AoE seeing them, something like blinding light, DB, and AoE stun, anything like that to stop them from enraging and then you just focus down the priest after this priest you're going to have this urn here so typically what you'll do is you'll kill the priest or you can just pull in the next pack if the priest is low and los to this spot back here everything will walk towards you and the night fae person can use the urn this way everything's going to be put together everything's going to be together for the aoe cleaves and once everything gets earned you can blow your cds here and just blow all the packs up after this, you're going to get Prideful, which I'll skip over, and we're going to go directly into Hakkar. Alright guys, so for Hakkar as a tank, it's not too complicated. You're just going to kind of tank him where he is. If you ever have to move around, make sure to move in because he'll be dropping puddles on the ground along with the ads. So make sure you're not standing in anything. Aside from that, he's going to be casting a Pierce ability, Piercing Barb. That ability does a lot of physical and magic damage. So Make sure to always have Shield of the Righteous up, but aside from that, you, you might want to consider having a defensive up like Ardent Defender or something like that if you're really low HP to begin with because he will chunk you for a good amount with the magic damage end of that ability. So I always make sure to have Shield of the Righteous up and then I always try and have a WOG ready and prepped. Now here we absolutely destroy him. He dies really quickly which is exactly what you want to do for this boss because otherwise he's going to keep casting his shield and the lower HP he gets, the more shields he'll start casting. Now the shields that he casts stack off of the amount of damage that he's done to your group. So if everyone pops a defensive before he uses the shield ability, before he damages you guys, you're going to end up with a smaller shield on him, which means you'll have to DPS a little bit less when it comes to taking down that shield. The shield will be weaker. So ideally you guys want to use your CDs to take as little damage as possible, but aside from that, that is the fight. Moving on, in this route I do skip two lubricators in the Mechagon area. You can use those lubricators for percent, you can pull them and then not pull stuff later on in Arden Wield. However, what I like to do is I skip those two lubricators and I pull a little bit of extra trash in Arden Wield. To do that however, and still get pride timing on the second boss, you're gonna need to pull this enraged spirit first. So that's what we're doing here. We have a little bit of a hard time, a couple people die. This is why I was saying earlier, you wanna have cooldowns when you do this ideally, because otherwise you run the risk of a couple people dying and stuff like that. 
Again, in lower keys, it shouldn't really be a problem because these guys don't do as much damage. But once you get to high keys, it gets to a point where if you don't have personals and if you don't have healing cooldown, you might wipe. So you have to be very careful when doing that. Here, I do the first pull in Mechagon, which is going to be the huge drill with one of the smaller mobs that do the spin up. You're just going to pull these together. AOE everything down, make sure you LOS the really big drill when he does his cast. And as for the spinny guy, you just want to make sure that you kick the discharge because it does a ton of damage. Now on this next pull, I'm going to pull the dog. I'm going to ask the group to see if they have, you know, some DPS cooldowns up. And once I know that they do, as long as you have a, a combust or just one DPS cooldown, you can go ahead, pull this three pack over here and AOE everything down. The only thing here is that if the discharges get off on you as the tank, you are going to get absolutely blasted. You do not want the discharges going off. So here you're going to want to use AOE stuns, AOE interrupts. Make sure you're throwing out your vendor shield using your own interrupt. After, you're gone, after you've gone through all those kinds of CCs, make sure your DPS are trying to interrupt the discharges, CC the discharges any way possible because they do a lot of damage. But you can more or less safely pull this if you have at least one cooldown and just aoe it all together if you do not have confidence in your group or you don't think you can tank all this feel free to just pull the dog by itself and then pull the three pack afterwards here i pull the other drill and i ask everyone to los with me in the same spot i'm going to pull this lubricator here you have to be careful because he's going to pull the really small guys that explode so make sure you all get out of the way when those are exploding if you want, you can have your DPS wait in the tunnel while you pull this. Just make sure they're aware that you're pulling this lubricator and then you're going to DPS all this down together. So make sure you get the lubricator kicks. Make sure you 100% get the self regeneration on the lubricator. Otherwise, he's just going to full heal if he keeps on casting it. And then you're going to have to keep LOSing in this pool. But all you have is the lubricator with you, which is more than easy enough to handle. So. Whenever the guy is casting a haywire, you LOS, you keep DPSing the lubricator. This is just going to save you a little bit of time instead of having to do the drill by himself and then the lubricator by himself. You can get a good amount of cleave on both of them here and kill them both at a relatively the same pace. After that, for those of you that don't know, if you're an engineer, you can press a big red button to the left of that room when you enter initially and it'll turn off all the slimes that are coming down the, it's not really a conveyor belt, but all the slimes that are coming into the room, you can stop them if you're an engineer. Here's the double lubricator skip that I was talking about earlier. You can shroud this if you have a rogue. Otherwise, just use invis pots and you're gonna go straight to this three pack here. This three pack does a ton of damage as well if the kicks are going off, except that the kicks are not targeted at just a tank, it's any random member. So. If your DPS gets like two of these cast on them, they'll probably die. So you guys want to make sure, again, you're using AOE stuns. As you saw, my druid used the beam earlier. You want to be using all your CC on this. And after that, you want to assign kicks, right? So I have my auto marker going. All the mobs are marked. We're all calling out what we're going to interrupt. In lower keys, these don't do as much damage. And as prop paladin, you can get a lot of the casts because you'll have Hodge. You'll have your vendor shield. You get a vendor shield resets and you can obviously use rebuke so just make sure that you're getting as many of those kicks as possible after that we're going to get pride which again i'll skip over and then we're going to go into the boss with pride all right guys so second boss here first thing as a tank is you're going to want to try and get as many kicks on the frostball as possible if you don't kick it you're going to take some damage so just make sure you're saving your vendor shield if you have to because a lot of people tend not to kick that ability wait till the last second until you kick just in case somebody else kicks if not use your vendor shield or your rebuke so that's number one thing the second thing is you're going to want people to be soaking the purple crystals that are summoned as a tank i don't really like soaking these because i start taking a lot of damage usually your dps can handle these just fine and they're better positioned to do so as the tank you want to be keeping the boss exactly where she is because the other ability that your dps get is having to have her in the middle of the both the marked dps so two dps will get marked they both have to be on either side of her and then she'll use an ability where she does like a little earthquake in a zigzag line and she'll be stunned if she's in there so as a tank for this boss, you want to really just stay in the same spot. You let the other people soak the crystals. 
all you're really focusing on is kicking the frost bolts and making sure that she's in the zigzag so just kind of stay still and she should be stunned if your dps are doing their job as for the second part of the boss which we're already on all you have to focus on as a tank are two things he does a buzz saw which stacks a bleed debuff on you you can use your Kirin pot on this however it does a ton of damage so you want to make sure you have as much shield of the righteous uptime here and you'll also want to be using your cooldowns because he'll start stacking them up and when they're stacked they do a ton of damage so don't want to be dying on this boss you use your defensives save them for the second part now the second part is your dps one of them will get marked with a huge circle around them they're gonna walk onto the boss and he'll be stunned that stun will make it so that you can drop the bleed debuff on that boss so just make sure you're not in the circle while he's being stunned and you'll be fine he'll get stunned and the bleed will drop however you're still gonna need defensives for that boss he hits like a truck and that's basically all you have to worry about as tank for that fight all right guys so another one of the big pulls we have on the outer ring the last one for this one luckily we have an urn so what i like to do is i pull these two raptors then I pull everything else together. We try and gather it all up and as close to the urn as possible, like we did here. And then you use the urn, everything's gonna get stunned. Again, this is the same pool as the second pool of the dungeon, so make sure you're kicking the shadow speaker. And aside from that, you're gonna be kiting just like the first time. Going into the Arden Wheel section, nothing really notable here except that we're going to be doing really big pulls but a lot of this stuff doesn't really need to be kicked or anything in particular you're just going to do big pulls maybe use a couple defensives here or there but usually these mobs are not too threatening so you can just get around with cc'ing them and stuff like that and you shouldn't be taking in too much damage this week that i have here it was inspiring so i had to do a little bit more kiting than i usually do However, most of the time you can honestly fake tank this and just do a ton of damage. You're just going to be DPSing this down. The pool after I, this is going to be a pat with the, the packs in front of this little broken down bridge, I guess you could say. So I'm going to pull these all together. And again, same thing. Nothing really to see here. You're just going to kite around. This time you have the birds which apply the debuff on you. So you might want to have to kite around a little bit more. But again, Arden Wield, nothing you really have to kick. You're just doing these big pulls, kiting a little bit, and that's really going to be it. So after this pull, we're going to summon the Pride, which I'm going to again skip over because we've seen this so many times already. After that, I'm going to do a slightly larger pull. I'm going to pull these birds. On top of this urn back here in this column, there's an Invis pack. And then I'm going to pull this stag over here. So I'm going to pull all of this together, gather it all up, and then we're going to use the urn on all these packs, blow our cooldowns. So this is where you can save a lot of time in this section with this urn. You can do a really big pull, make sure you have your cooldowns up, and burn everything down really quickly. It's going to save you giga time. After that urn pull, I come down here, I pull some birds. I do end up pulling this matron. Now, I recommend not pulling matrons for the most part. They do a stacking debuff. They do a good amount of damage. It's a little bit better to avoid them. They're also really tanky. However, it's not too bad if you only pull this matron in this section. You should be okay. I don't recommend it, though, if, if you can avoid it. I did do it for this one, though. And again, guys, you don't really have to focus too much on the Arden Wield section. You're just doing big pulls, doing damage. Kite a little bit if you're taking too much damage. And that's about it. The only memorable thing really is every once in a while you'll get a debuff. I don't even remember which mob applies it to be honest. Where you're going to have to jump because if the debuff stacks to 10, then you'll be put asleep. So if you get that debuff, your DBM should announce it to you and just be aware that you're going to have to jump until the debuff goes away. Finally, on this last pool here, everyone tells me they have CDs up. So I'm going to do a bigger pool here. Normally, I would pull everything here. However, since we have Inspired, I'm going to take it a little bit easy. We're just going to burn all this down, and then we're going to finish it up with this two-pack over here. After that, we're going to get Pride. And then, again, skipping this, we're going to go into the boss. So for this boss's tank, she's going to do like a little frontal. Make sure you dodge that. Dodge the orbs. 
not really much to do here as a tank you don't really have to worry about the debuff that's kind of more of the dps's <laughs> issue uh if they do want to switch the debuff with you so a thing you can do is you can just pass this debuff along to just a tank and one other dps make just make sure that you're tanking in one position so that's possible usually i just tank her here in the ledge because you can have a ranged dps stand on top of that ledge Sometimes the ranged DPS will want to stand there, sometimes they don't. I always just tank her on the side here in case somebody does. However, just dodge the frontal, dodge the orbs, and if you notice that they're trying to pass the debuff onto you, make sure you have a defensive or two up for that because it does do a decent amount of damage when it's stacked. But aside from that, make sure you take one of the orbs when the boss tells you to so you can jump in the air and avoid the huge explosion and you'll be good. Pretty straightforward boss. All right, so you guys did the dungeon. You finally arrived at the last boss, and luckily enough for us, he's pretty straightforward. So the first thing is he's gonna cast Soul Crusher, which is a debuff on you that makes you take ticking magic damage. Typically, I like to have a defensive up for this. If I'm going fresh into the fight, usually I, I'm okay. I won't pop Ardent Defender or a Trinket immediately because I'll have some charges of Word of Glory or something like that up and I can heal through it. However, make sure that before you get the debuff, you either pop Ardent Defender or a Trinket if you have one. Guardian of the Ancient Kings, maybe you can get an external from your healer. It does do a ton of damage. You can survive it on non-tyrannical weeks without a defensive, but it is hard. It's still kind of risky, so I suggest using a defensive. In tyrannical weeks, 100% you will need to use a defensive for that debuff. Aside from that, he does two frontals basically. He'll raise his left arm and his right arm to do a beam. Whenever he raises either one of those arms, just move out of the way. And then if he lifts both arms up in the air, you know that he's gonna slam the ground down in front of you. You just have to get out of melee range to dodge all that stuff. Pretty straightforward. After that, you guys should have called out which portals you're gonna take. There are four portals in the room. When he casts the portals, you go into the portal. As a tank, you'll be going in with the healer so that you can both do DPS since, you know, you. Both of you together equal about one DPS. And you're gonna kill the spirit in front of you. All you had to do is DPS him down, save your Avenging Wrath and your cooldowns for this part. You'll DPS it down behind you after you kill it. There's a totem you have to click on. Make sure you click on the totem, otherwise he was not gonna take the damage in the last phase and you guys are basically gonna have to do the phase over again. After all this is done, you're going to be TP'd back to the platform and you just have to take him down to 10% HP and he will flop over and you'll be done with the dungeon. And that is going to be it for the other side, guys. One of my favorite dungeons to tank for sure. I enjoy tanking the dungeon a lot. It has been one of the more difficult ones to complete. It did get a timer buff of two minutes more recently, up to 43 minutes, up from 41. And originally it was only a 39 minute timer. So Blizzard is aware that it's one of the more difficult dungeons to complete. However, mechanically, I don't feel like it's a difficult dungeon as a tank. The bosses, stuff like Hakar and the third boss are a little bit troublesome at times for groups, but the trash itself, in my opinion, isn't too bad, especially in the Arden Wield section. I actually just really enjoy that section because you can do like really big pools. Overall, I really enjoy the dungeon. Again, for those first two pools and the pools are in, in the outer ring just make sure you're kiting a lot guys i've had a lot of people tell me they have trouble with those you're not meant to really face tank those you just have to get the kicks on the shadow speaker and then after that you're just gonna have to be kiting a lot there's really no way you can tank it unless you're kiting if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below if you've made it this far please consider subscribing i'll catch you guys all in the next one